here. I don't think Mother knew about this. Uncle Marvin was strangled by his own beard. Yeah, you never saw it coming. And welcome to America's Family History Show, Extreme Genes and ExtremeGenes.com. It is Fisher here, your radio root sleuth on the program where we shake your family tree and watch the nuts fall out. And this episode is brought to you by BYU TV's Relative Race. Well, welcome back. It's nice to have you, Genies. And we got some great guests coming up today. A little bit later on, we're going to continue the conversation we started last week talking about search angels. These are people who get somewhat skilled in the DNA area and are helping adoptees find birth families and help solve similar situations. So we're going to talk to Mikkel Keeney today. She's an Arizona woman who helps train search angels and give you a better idea about how you might be able to do the same on behalf of other people. Then later in the show, we're talking photographs with the co-founder of a great company called VividPix. Oh, their software is so easy and makes such a difference when it comes to repairing your faded photographs. And those that are damaged, you're going to love it. We're going to talk to Rick Void about that. And he's got some great tips for you, by the way, on how to preserve your photos, especially in the changing seasons that we've got coming up. Then still later in the show, we're going to talk to Team Black. It's Jerrica and Joe from Relative Race on BYU TV. Yes, it's the fourth season going on right now. And another episode is coming up Sunday night. 9 o'clock Eastern, 6 o'clock Pacific. You're going to find out what Team Black is thinking about the first three episodes of the show so far. All right, it's time to check in with Boston and talk to my good friend David Allen Lambert, the chief genealogist of the New England Historic Genealogical Society and AmericanAncestors.org. How's it going, David? Hey, things in Beantown are looking good, especially for our Red Sox. Yes, they are, aren't they? I think it's going to be a fun season for the playoffs in MLB. Where do we start with our family histoire news today, my friend? Well, I get a real quick one to just to let you know I had a consult today with my fifth cousin. Didn't know he was my fifth cousin until after the consult, but our fourth great grandfather, in fact, fought in the Revolutionary War and lived in the same town. No kidding. First time we've seen each other in 200 years, I told him. It's about time we took a selfie. <laughs> there you go. My first story for Family History News is in Gottingen, Germany, where a roofer working on a 12th century cathedral found a message in a bottle. <laughs> Not on a beach, but in a roof. The ironic twist of this fish is it was a note left by his grandfather 88 years ago. Oh, wow. (laughs) I love this. So Peter Brandt got this note out of the bottle left by his 18-year-old grandfather back in 1930, Willie Brandt, talking about the despair after World War I in Germany and wrote, quote, we hope for better times soon to come. Well, World War II would come soon. I don't know if that would have better times. Yeah, I don't think so. But what an amazing thing. I mean, he had to look at this and go, no, this, this can't be. <laughs> but they're both in the roofing business, and he knew his grandfather. And I guess they overlapped a little bit and, and eventually took over over the family business that's been going on for for decades. Great little time capsule. Yeah. Our next story talks about the consequences of war and disease. World War I, of course, many of us have ancestors that were part of that, and many of our ancestors had influenza. In Philadelphia, in September of 1918, a return victory parade may have caused thousands of deaths to follow up because of all the people who had influenza are there in congested parade routes, which would eventually lead to over 4,000 deaths. Wow. In Philadelphia. Yeah. In Philadelphia. And it's something you just don't hear that much about, but the reality is it's just not a good idea to get together when something like that is happening. No, in fact, they say that some of the influenza that hit Europe was brought over by our soldiers. Yeah. That they went over there and it may have been part of the reason the Germans were not so strong, because they were hankered down with influenza we gave them. My next story is fascinating. Back in 2011, a backhoe digging in Queens, New York, struck iron. Well, they thought they hit a pipe or a rock. They actually hit a casket. And it was a perfectly preserved body of a 150-year-old African-American lady who they now believe they found. Martha Peterson who was 26 back in 1850, seems like the likely candidate after doing some genealogical research into the people living in the area at that time. Where she was buried used to be a church, and with forensic imaging fish, they brought her face back to life. 
That's incredible. And she was very well preserved from what I understand, but her body was actually destroyed to a great degree by the backhoe as they were going about this construction project. I don't think they were expecting to find anything like that. And, no. of course, we talked about a, a small child that was found in California, I believe, last year. And these iron caskets that are still around uh, in cemeteries have these preserved bodies. Civil War soldiers were often in these as well. Right. Well, that's a fascinating story. And our next one is about a living person from 100 years ago. This is Nora Whitkiss out in England, who, after 30 years of living together with her man, his 74-year-old Malcolm Yates, they'll be getting married. They <laughs> no, met at a dance. No, wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. So he was 44 and she was 70 and they've been together now for 30 years. That's crazy. And they, yeah, she said that, well, uh, life went by kind of quick and Malcolm never mentioned it and I wasn't going to ask him to marry me. Well, they get married next month in England. So I hope you have many years, if not many months together at yeah. 100 years old. <laughs> well, I don't think we're going to have much progeny from this couple. No, I don't um, think so. I don't think so. My blogger spotlight this week shines on Leanne Kruger out in Alberta, Canada, where her blog called ifamilyhistory.blogspot.com touches on interesting aspects of genealogy. How about interviewing your family? If your children are into Minecraft, how about a Minecraft pedigree chart with those figures on it? Well, Mm. that might get the kids interested in genealogy. I'll be out in Salt Lake City for the British Institute, so if you're out there, I'd love to see you. That will be October 14th to 21st, but two weeks later, I'm going out again. Our 40th year of going out to NEHDS's Salt Lake City Research Tour, November 4th to 11th. If you've never gone out to Salt Lake, sometimes it can be intimidating. Maybe American Ancestors staff, including me, can help you. Uh, you contact our education department here at American Ancestors. And don't forget, if you don't have a membership in American Ancestors, you can save $20 using the coupon code EXTREME on AmericanAncestors.org. Well, that's all I have from Beantown this week, Fish. We'll be out at Rootstack soon. That's right. We're getting down to it. All right. Thanks, David. Great talking to you. And coming up next, we're going to talk to a lady who is training search angels. These are people who have a real good grasp on DNA and genealogy, and they're helping people such as adoptees find their birth families. Mikkel Keeney talks about what she's doing coming up next in three minutes on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show. Ever wonder where you got your bright green eyes or your infectious laugh? Thanks to technology, discovering your family's story has never been easier. And we're bringing it all together at Roots Tech, the world's largest family history conference. Registration for Roots Tech 2019 is open. Join us February 27th through March 2nd for this incredible four-day event. Learn from over 300 classes on topics such as DNA, capturing family stories, and preserving legacies. For a limited time, take advantage of early bird pricing. Purchase a four-day pass for only $189 if you register before October 12th. That's $110 off a regularly priced pass. Explore over 200 exhibits in the Expo Hall and interact with the latest technology. Join the excitement. Join the fun. Discover your family. Discover yourself. Discover Roots Tech. February 27th through March 2nd at the Salt Palace Convention Center. Register today at rootstech.org. Hey, Janies, it's Fisher, and here comes another Sunday, which means it's another episode of Relative Race on BYU TV. This weekend is episode four in season four, and we've got three teams with strikes against them as they all take on this nationwide challenge, not only to find family, but to win $50,000. In our last episode, Precious from Team Green actually got to meet Deborah, her great aunt. Austin and Michael in Team Red met Michael's uncle, who himself gains contact information from Michael. Michael's grandmother. Team Blue, after a rough day, found themselves in Lilburn, Georgia, visiting with Josh's cousin. And Team Black was in Virginia, meeting a cousin to their mom. Have fun with the drama, feel the emotion, and check out the challenges, too. It's a lot of fun. It's Relative Race on BYU TV. You can also stream it at BYUtv.org and through the BYU TV app. Relative Race, Season 4, happening right now. It's Sunday nights at 9 Eastern, 6 o'clock Pacific, on BYU TV. 
Did you know that Family Search Family Tree is available through a powerful new mobile app experience? That's right. Now you can view, edit and even add information to ancestors in your family tree whenever and wherever you are. You no longer need to wait to get home or make a date with your computer to view or update your family tree. You can add details to your tree when visiting with family or when capturing details from a trip to the cemetery. You can share new family history discoveries from classroom settings. Settings. You can even make the most of your time when waiting for doctor appointments or car repairs. Get started today by downloading the free Family Search Family Tree app to your Apple or Android device. Visit familysearch.org slash tree app to get the Family Tree app for free. Exploring and expanding your family tree has never been more convenient. Visit familysearch.org slash tree app to download the Family Search Family Tree mobile app today. Welcome back to America's Family History Show. It's Extreme Genes and ExtremeGenes.com. I am Fisher, your radio root sleuth. And you may recall recently we talked to Allison Gunner Johnson out of the Tempe, Arizona area. And she was talking about how she became a search angel after she got a little benefit from other people's knowledge and located her own birth family. And that search angel that mentored her is on the line with me right now. She's Mikkel Keeney from the Tempe area. Nice to have you on the show, Mikkel. It's great to be on the show. You know, I just thought this was a really interesting place to go because with so many more tests being done on DNA, and I check every day to see if there are new matches that come in, and they just don't slow down. And this means there's more opportunity for people to break through, whether it's for genealogy or finding a birth family or solving a crime, whatever it might be. There is really need for people to understand what's going on in the DNA world. And, uh, Mikkel, I guess you've been at this for some time because you're now mentoring people in this direction. Tell us a little about your background. Yes, I've been a traditional genealogist for most of my life since I was a teenager. And I have a younger brother who was adopted. And so when he took his DNA test a couple of years ago, about two and a half years ago, that is when I learned how to build family trees from scratch for adoptees and families and people searching with misattributed parentage, and it's just an exciting time to get into that. And it's a match of both traditional genealogy and what they call genetic genealogy. It's not just one or the other. You have to you need get both. a background in both. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, when you think about it, I mean, really, that's where the power comes from. It's one thing to say, oh, my ethnicity is 3% Irish, and I'm 19% mm-hmm. Spanish, and all that. But when you're getting down to figuring out, you know, who's really part of your family, it's powerful stuff, and you need both. That's where the gold is, is in the matches. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, tell us, how did that go, by the way? You found the birth family, I assume? Yes. Both his birth parents passed away decades ago, but he was able to meet some of his siblings on his mom's side. And it was a great reunion. They all had this social anxiety to varying degrees, some very extreme, you know, panic attacks and so on. But when they met, they just said it felt so comfortable. It was just like a natural thing they had going on. Sure. They, they got each other. Yeah, so, absolutely. So you've been educating yourself, and now you're educating others. And there is a term for that, as we mentioned earlier. It's search angel. And there are uh-huh. many people getting into this. C.C. Moore certainly has a, a huge group that are involved in helping other people and mentoring them, as Blaine Bettinger is, and I know you have an association with Blaine. Tell us a little Mm -hmm. about how you go about mentoring people as search angels. Well, I found out that it's just mostly learning as you go. You have to have a knack for it, for one thing, and you'll find out if you do or not once you try to do the detective work and build the trees. But other than that, you do have to learn from the best in the the world. And so you can do that online through Facebook groups, such as DNA Detectives or through Blaine's Genetic Genealogy Tips and Techniques Facebook group, just by reading posts. And there are so many people in those groups and so many posts that you would never sleep if you read them all. So you have to kind of just limit yourself to the most current things that are coming in and And you'll learn who are the top posters that really are doing groundbreaking tools that will help you to learn this work and do it faster. So that is how I learned. Then I started going to conferences to I4GG in San Diego with CC, and that's Institute for Genetic Genealogy. And so once I was there, again, you find out people who have been doing it a lot longer than I have, how they go about this and, and what works and what doesn't. 
Well, let's go through that process here. You mentioned that you saw just lists and lists of opportunities, basically, to help people. Mm -hmm. Is it that there's one person then that goes in and works with the individual who posted their, their case, or might several people be in there working on it? It could be several people. For, for, for my part, I don't usually um, get involved too much with helping people who are on the boards just because I have so many people here locally and people that are actually related to me through my DNA matches who need help. And so I have a backlog. I've, I've solved dozens of cases, but there are also other ones that are in various stages waiting for new matches to come in or target testing people to, to solve the puzzle. So I don't have time really to offer too much to help in the group. I will answer questions, but to specifically help somebody, that's not my area. Does that make sense? Yeah. You're, you're talking about working with people you know or, or have been introduced to yeah. or referred to locally. I get that. Yeah. But, you uh-huh. know, the nice thing about this is, is is it does mean there's opportunity for anybody to serve somebody else from anywhere, you know, from a little mountain there cabin in uh-huh. Kentucky to <laughs> somewhere in Russia. It doesn't make exactly. any difference. Exactly, and that happens. Uh-huh. Some does of the it? people I, I collaborate with live in other states. And I've never met them in person, but we trust each other's work and we know how to work together. Do you find that there, there are people with specialties that you lack or vice versa where, where you have that collaboration ongoing? Yes. Um, when I was helping somebody who had Hawaiian heritage and Filipino heritage, I found out about endogamy in that part of the island. So I had no idea how extreme it was. And so someone said, you need to talk to Kalani. And so I said, oh, Kalani, okay. And so then you find out who the specialist is in that area and find out more about it. So you know the next step. Same thing with the Portuguese Azores Islands. I had an adoptee whose father's line came from that, from those islands. And so um, Catherine was instrumental in, in helping me figure that out because that's her specialty is Portuguese Azores Islands. And honestly, when I went to her class at the first I4GG in San Diego a couple of years ago, I thought, this has nothing really to do with me. I don't know exactly why I'm here. And then it wasn't but a couple months later that I met this adoptee who needed that specific help. And so I was able Mm. to know who to reach out to. Isn't that interesting? And that's really true. I I think a lot of people look to many of us who have been doing this for a long, long time as the knowers of all things in the world. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And the reality is that nobody can know everything about genealogy, whether it's, you know, you compare New York City records, say, to records somewhere in Montana or to some place in the Netherlands. I mean, they're very different. And mm-hmm. you have to have people who know the territory. And the same really applies in genetics as well. Endogamy has got to be a real problem. And for those who aren't familiar with the term, it means basically you share many of the same ancestors among your family. In other words, maybe your father and your mother are second or third cousins going back not too yeah, far. A and lot of cousins and your ancestry married and intermarried and... Yeah, so everybody's kind of interconnected more than you would expect. Yeah, and that makes a problem because then as you try to figure out what your relationship might be to somebody else, you might have a little too much shared DNA Mm -hmm. and have to kind of sort all that out. How do you go about some of those tasks of uh, sorting out endogamy cases, Mikkel? For sorting them out, well, you look at the shared matches and try to make categories. And a lot of it I can do in, in my head. I know Susie Moore has said that she does that, too. We do use whiteboards, too, and different spreadsheets and sometimes lucid charts and things like that. There are other new tools like the Leeds Color Cluster method. So it's partly just being able to have that aha moment where you see oh, that line must go with this line. Even though there is endogamy, you know, you, you see a connection between the two families right. in the right generation. And then partly just doing the groundwork. A lot of these cases take time. If you don't have a super close match, like a first cousin or an aunt or uncle or, you know, grandparent, you know, there's not much work to do on a case like that. But if, if you have like a second, a third, a fourth cousin match as your closest match, then it can take sometimes weeks, days, weeks, months of work. It just depends on the case. Sure. They're not always quickly solved. Right, exactly. And it's really very similar process to what they're doing with some of the criminal cases right now. Mm-hmm. And are most uh, of your cases involved with adoptees, or is it just people trying to break through their lines? Almost all adoptees, and maybe about half and half with misattributed parentage, people who grew up thinking their father or their grandfather was one person, and then when they do their DNA results, they have no matches to those lines, Yeah, and find out that their biological line is, is in a different line. And that can be devastating, as you can imagine, because 
People are very tied into their heritage. Part of being a search angel is learning how to have that connection to be able to be part social worker and help people feel better if they find someone was a criminal in their their line, a close relative or something. You have to just let them know that doesn't define their heritage. Hey, we've all got them. We've all got them, Mikkel. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> right? So when you get into this, as, you, as you've progressed with this, what are you finding is the most fulfilling for you? When the case is solved and you're able to walk somebody through their tree a little bit and show them what has been found, time and time again, they just feel so relieved just to have that closure, just to know the first chapter of their life, even if they don't want contact or desire contact or the other parties don't desire contact. It's not always about contact and about reunions. And so just to see photos of people that you biologically descend from is very fulfilling to most people. Yeah. So if somebody wanted to become a search angel, how would you recommend they get the proper training, not only in the process, but in this counseling side of it that often comes with it? Okay. I would start on those two Facebook pages, either DNA Detectives and or genetic genealogy tips and techniques and just read up on some of the posts and spend at least some time every day on them and see what's being discussed because that doesn't cost any money at all and you can see if that's something you really want to pursue. Going to conferences takes time and investment of money. That's important if you can do it, but I think that there are other ways. When I started, there was no blueprint, like, here's how you be a search angel, you know? Right. And so what I'm doing now with small group search angel training and working on writing an ebook for search angels is to try to fill that gap so people that are starting out and realizing they have a passion for this can have some place to go and know what the next steps are, just to try to save them time of possibly making some mistakes along the way. Sure. Because we do hear occasionally of search angels, you'll have a hypothesis and it might not be the right one to start with, but you have to get to where you're certain that you have the, the tree correct so that you're not spreading any bad information. Boy, yeah, that's a huge responsibility. You're absolutely right. It is a huge responsibility. You know, we do this as volunteers, but you also have to have safeguards and be able to follow best practices. Sure. Absolutely. She's Mikkel Keeney from Tempe, Arizona. Mikkel, thanks so much for sharing all your information about it. I think it's going to be useful to a lot of people. You're welcome. And coming up next, I'm going to talk to a guy I got to know at the FGS conference in Indiana in August. His name is Rick Voigt, and he is one of the co-founders for a company called VividPix. It's a software that is going to make fixing your pictures so much easier. And he's got some great advice, too, on preservation. You're going to want to hear it coming up in five minutes on Extreme Genes. Looking for an easy way to show off your family history and share it with your family? Family Chartmasters offers beautiful custom pedigree art pieces and inexpensive family reunion draft charts in any design or size that fits your needs. With a free consultation at FamilyChartmasters.com, you can get started creating a new family masterpiece. Family Chartmasters has over 11 years of experience in creating and printing family charts. They can print any style genealogy chart from any genealogy file and can create exactly what you're looking for. You'll work with a specialized and talented consultant whose goal is to make you happy. Decorative charts make fantastic gifts for all occasions. And with Family Chart Master's option of ordering duplicate charts at half price along with your original purchase at full price, you can afford to give a family heirloom to each member of your family. Contact Family Chart Masters today at FamilyChartMasters.com for your free consultation. Family Chart Masters will give the greatest care to your family history. Scientific studies have proven that youth who know even a little bit about their family history perform better academically and have a greater sense of personal confidence and stability. Genealogy is its own incredible superpower that arms our children with super strength. But how do you get your child or grandchild interested in studying their family history? That kind of stuff is just for grandmas, right? Not anymore. Zap the grandma gap.com leaps the generation gap in a single bound. Author Janet Havorka provides you with useful and timely advice on helping the young people in your life become engaged in their own family history. Janet has an entire collection of books to inspire the young and the young at heart in fun, interactive ways. She also offers creative tips and advice on her blog and in her free weekly newsletter. 
Stop by ZapTheGrandmaGap.com today to sign up for Janet's free email newsletter with 52 weeks of easy tips, free downloads, and order your set of resource books and workbooks. And welcome back. It's America's Family History Show, Extreme Genes and ExtremeGenes.com. It is Fisher here, your radio root sleuth. It wasn't that long ago I was hanging out at the Federation of Genealogical Societies with my next guest, Rick Voigt. He is the co-founder of Vivid Picks, and they've got this amazing product called Restore. And I'm very excited they're going to be sponsors on the show because we're going to see all kinds of expertise leveraged right here on your behalf to save your photographs. Hi, Rick. Welcome to Extreme Genes. Great to have you. Hey, Scott. A pleasure to be here. Thanks so much for having me. So you've been in in the photo business for like 33 years, and I know your partner's been in for like 29. He's an engineer. He's got 150 patents. And you've been doing this product from Vivid Picks called Restore for like the last six years. And this is really fun stuff. Yeah. Vivid Picks, we've been around for six years. We have been selling a software to improve underwater photos since we began. And we've sold that in over 100 countries. Restore, which fixes old photos and documents, has been selling for two and a half years. And it's starting to gain a little bit of traction. So we're looking forward to sharing it with folks and having them give their picks of Evan Pick site. Yeah, we're going to talk about this little thing we're going to do in just a little bit. But I want to talk about all the issues people deal with in preserving their photographs. Now, you're in the process right now, you've been telling me off the air, of downsizing and moving from Atlanta to Charleston, South Carolina. And this kind of creates a little problem for you, doesn't it, for your old photos? So it does a bunch of stuff. So as you accumulate possessions through life and you go from a larger home to a smaller home, what do you do with all of it? And then we know from a photograph and document perspective that those need to be stored in a certain way. And I'm going from an environment of having a basement and a freezer where I kept everything properly stored Uh, It wasn't plugged in, but properly stored. And now I I literally have a home on stilts. Um, So (laughs) I need to be able to find... Yeah, it's on stilts. It's five and a half feet off the ground. Oh, that's funny. Okay. (laughs) No basement there. No basement there. So, yeah, I'm I'm needing to make sure that I properly store my photos. Now, you don't have an attic there either, do you? Well, we do, and it gets mighty warm up there, which is not very good for storing your photos. Sure. Unless you want them to turn all yellow and red and not look so good. Yeah, you know, we talk about this on the show all the time. You know, you got light and humidity and then the big variation from heat and cold because we're going into the cold weather now, and this will cause another contraction of the materials, and this applies to documents as well. And then the expansion and the heat, I mean, it's just a really nasty thing. So what's your plan now in Charleston, South Carolina, after what you've done in Atlanta? Yeah, that's a good question. So with the move, I've stored everything in one closet. So at least I've organized my possessions into one place. Two, going through the full scanning process and making sure that they're properly backed up in multiple locations. Right. Then three, I am a cobbler's son. I have not improved all of my photos and all of my documents. So I'll run everything through Restore. And now I've got everything in good, solid digital backup. And then I'll purge some of the things. If you think about photos for so many years, we'd order double prints. Well, you know, I've got tons of double print envelopes. Time to get rid of some of those. I've got tons of images that just weren't that great. So now I'm able to get rid of the ones that weren't so great. So it's a process. It's a process of love. I guess you relive the memories along the way. You know, it's true. And I must tell you, I kind of cringe when I think about the idea of throwing away any photographs. But the reality is, as time has gone on, we have gone from, oh, you get a few pictures maybe in a lifetime, right, in the 19th century. And then it kind of picked up in the beginning of the 20th century. And by the 40s and 50s, a lot more pictures. 60s, 70s, 80s, wow, the duplicates, like you mentioned, and the bad ones that just come out. Those don't need to be saved. There's no benefit in that. And now, of course, we take photos digitally and we can take dozens if not hundreds in a day if we choose to absolutely and we are taking more pictures than ever before and we're not having access to them because they're trapped on our phone over 90 percent of our images that we are taking are on mobile devices 
And then some of them were posting up on Facebook. Well, it's really hard to be able to pull those things back down again. So the organization is important for the current stuff. And then, yeah, really getting a handle on all the different photos of the years. Yeah, it's a real challenge. And then recently you told me about this. You're visiting your mom, who's, what, like 87 or something now? And uh, yeah. you did this great project that I think makes so much sense involving a camera over your shoulders and a photo album. Yeah. So what I did is I set up a tripod. I put a standard digital point-and-shoot camera pointing down at the photo album so it was over our shoulders and then we just went through page by page by page, and she got to remember and relive all of those memories. And now I have all of that recorded. So now when I go back into the photo albums, I know the stories behind the photos. Yeah, I love that. And it makes a lot of sense. You know, there are a lot of photos that have people who are not even related. They're just old friends or college people, you know, somebody like that. It's, it's good to know who you've got in those photos. Well, yeah, and you're able to get to know your mother better than you knew before. I mean, that was just really fun. Yeah, it's a great time. All right, we've got to talk about this great deal you're putting together for people to get 10 free conversions on their photographs, improving them with the click of a button. And i got to tell you, having seen this work at the Federation of Genealogical Societies Conference in Indiana in August, it's amazing. And it's so nice to see how easy you've made it because... Even people who are, shall we say, technically challenged are going to find this a breeze. Yeah, so what we've done is we've designed patented software in order to improve color, contrast, sharpness, and brightness all at once. So there's super great software called Photoshop in the marketplace, but it can be a little bit difficult to know how to use. Yep. And what our patents do is or the way that we analyze all of our photos is we understand what needs to be adjusted and in one click you're able to adjust color contrast sharpness and brightness and then in our trial what we're able to do is to provide 10 free fixes so the people are able to pull down our software fix 10 photos no credit card required and it's kind of like i'm from missouri you know show me let me see how this stuff really right works. yeah and so putting together a, a web page, so vivid-picks.com forward slash extreme genes, and now folks are able to download the software and give it a try. Now, this is fun, and you can link to it also through our extremegenes.com website, and you'll see links to it periodically on our Facebook page as well. And so, uh, once again, your address for it is vividpix.com slash extreme genes. Exactly. So vivid dash picks P-I-X dot com forward slash extreme genes. All right. And it's very fun. And, and they give you like nine different choices of improved pictures of the same one. And you can pick the one you like and then you just move on to the next one. It doesn't get any better than that. And uh, Rick, I'm excited about it because I'm thinking, you know, with the holidays coming up, what a great gift to be able to take some of these improved photos and give them as gifts to your family members. Absolutely. So it's an easy way for you to be able to improve some of your photos. And actually, you can print them on vividpixprints.com. And you can make photo albums or enlargements or any number of things. Yeah, it's, it's great stuff. So check it out at extremegenes.com or vivid-pixpix.com slash extremegenes. And get your free 10 pics fixed. It's awesome. It's great talking to you, Rick. I'm looking forward to seeing what some of our listeners come up with and the improvements they get in the pictures. We'll share them on social media and, of course, on your site as well. It's going to be a lot of fun. And what a great project as we move into the fall with Vivid Picks. Scott, thanks for your time. Thanks to all of your audience. All right. Thanks, bud. And coming up next, we're going to talk to Team Black from Relative Race. Relative Race is back. It's in its fourth season. And we're going to get their take on the first three episodes of this season coming up next in three minutes on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show.
You know, there are so many ways to tell a family story, either through the written word, through video, through audio. But of course, as the old expression says, a picture is worth a thousand words and a thousand words can tell quite the family story. Hi, Genies, it's Fisher. And this is a great era to be alive where we have incredible software like VividPix Restore Picture Fix. If you're one of those people who really struggles with technology, all you have to do is be able to digitize a photograph and then let VividPix Restore restore your picture. If it's faded and almost gone, you're going to see some amazing results with this incredible software. And get this, if you go to vivid-pics.com slash extreme genes, they're going to let you try Vivid Pics for free on 10 photographs of your choice. And then with each photo, you get nine selections from which to choose as the best restoration of your picture. So check it out. You can also link to it through extremegenes.com. You're going to love Restore from Vivid Pics. Legacy Tree Genealogist is a proud sponsor of Extreme Genes. Based in Salt Lake City, Utah, near the world's largest family history library, we've worked with genealogists all over the globe since 2004 to track down records, find your ancestors, and the stories that bring your legacy to life. We also analyze DNA test results, help you join lineage societies, and find missing cousins. Legacy Tree is the recommended research partner of MyHeritage.com and is the world's highest client-rated genealogy firm. Call Call us toll free at 1-800-818-1476 or register online to get a free estimate. Right now, you can save up to $100 on professional genealogy research. But hurry, this offer expires at the end of the month. Even experienced researchers can benefit from our proven and experienced staff of specialists who can bring new approaches to old problems. Learn from our free genealogy tips on our blog at LegacyTree.com slash blog. Legacy Tree Genealogists. We do the research. You enjoy the discoveries. Hey, Genies, Fisher here with a shout out to our Patrons Club members at patreon.com slash extreme genes. This is where friends of the show support extreme genes for as little as a dollar a month, all the way up to the cost of a very nice burger each month. I mean, a really juicy one. You can support the show and enjoy various special Patrons Club member benefits, such as acknowledgement on extremegenes.com, special bonus podcasts from expert guests like Maureen Taylor, the photo detective, C.C. Moore, your genetic genealogist, great storytellers and experts on record sets from all over the world. We even offer expert advice on specific questions challenging your research. So go to patreon.com slash extreme genes and get signed up. We love sharing your genealogical journey with you on our Extreme Genes Patrons Club. After all, what would you rather have, inspiring and informative content or another greasy burger? The choice is yours. And thanks for supporting Extreme Genes. Welcome back. It is America's Family History Show, Extreme Genes and ExtremeGenes.com. Fisher here, your radio root sleuth. And as you know by now, Relative Race is back on BYU TV every Sunday night at 9 o'clock Eastern, 6 o'clock Pacific, and whatever time in between, right? And we're up to uh, episode four. And we've got Team Black on the line with us right now. They're out of Cincinnati, Ohio. It's Joe and Jerrica Henline, the siblings. How you doing, guys? Hey. We're doing good. You are, aren't you? You're having too much fun, I can tell. So who decided to go on the show and why? Oh, that would be Joe. Joe definitely decided for us. <laughs> Honestly, I was really just scrolling through on social media, and I saw a link pop up that said, Audition for Relative Race. <laughs> and so I clicked on the link, and Jarek and I just kind of casually threw together a little audition video, and we submitted it, and they called us the next day. So we're like, oh, dear, what did we get ourselves into? Well, you got a shot at $50,000 and having some amazing experiences with your relatives. And, and what were you looking for, by the way? You know, we weren't sure exactly what we were looking for. We know most of our relatives that are close to us, but we didn't know exactly what specifically we were looking for. We were just looking to find family and make new friends with our family members. Really? So you weren't missing anybody, there's no adoption situation in your family, you just wanted to get a little further out and see what was out there. Exactly, yeah. We just wanted to have an adventure together as siblings. 
Now, obviously, we can only talk about episodes one, two, and three because that's all that's aired right now. We don't want any spoilers for the rest of the season. But let's talk about one of those highlights in there for you that you were completely not expecting. Yes, absolutely. So one of the biggest surprises for us was getting to hear our grandfather's voice for the very first time. He passed before either of us were born. And we knew he had been a musician, didn't realize he was actually part of a band in West Virginia, and they actually had recordings of him singing and had never heard his voice before that moment, which was very emotional, but also just amazing that that history had been preserved. Isn't that fun? Now, this is your father's father or your mother's father? That would be our father's father. Your father's father, your name line. Wow. And so what caused him to pass so young? I believe he died of a heart disease of some sort. I don't remember all the details, but sure. he passed early on. And so you met other relatives connected to your grandpa? Right. Yes. So we actually connected with our cousin Don. I believe he was our third cousin Don. And his mom knew my grandfather, remembered stories of him. And our cousin Don played us a little bit of music on what could have been our grandfather's violin. It was definitely played in his band. So my grandfather probably played the very same violin we got to hear play. It was an incredible moment and one I wouldn't have traded for the world. Especially leading up to the show and thinking like, who could we possibly meet? (laughs) You know, that would be all that interesting. (laughs) And it's only day two and Relative Race has already knocked it out of the park, so... You've already had that kind of experience where you just go, wow, now you know what you've gotten yourself into, right? (laughs) Exactly. Amazing. So, guys, has this gotten you interested in your family history in terms of, you know, researching it or, or writing about it a little bit more? We have definitely been more interested in finding out about our family's past or history, and we continue to look forward to learning something new every day. Um, Our family that we've met is willing to help, and we've been enjoying conversations with them about that. Wow. Well, this is fun stuff. These are the siblings, Joe and Jerrica Henline. They're Team Black on Relative Race on BYU TV, Sunday nights at 9 Eastern, 6 o'clock Pacific. And uh, you guys continue on, and we look forward to uh, seeing further adventures with you for the rest of the year. Absolutely. Thanks so much. We're looking forward to sharing our journey. And coming up next, Tom Perry talks preservation on Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show, in three minutes. Looking for an easy way to show off your family history and share it with your family? Family Chartmasters offers beautiful custom pedigree art pieces and inexpensive family reunion draft charts in any design or size that fits your needs. With a free consultation at FamilyChartmasters.com, you can get started creating a new family masterpiece. Family Chartmasters has over 11 years of experience in creating and printing family charts. They can print any style genealogy chart from any genealogy file and can create exactly what you're looking for. You'll work with a specialized and talented consultant whose goal is to make you happy. Decorative charts make fantastic gifts for all occasions. And with Family Chartmaster's option of ordering duplicate charts at half price along with your original purchase at full price, you can afford to give a family heirloom to each member of your family. Contact Family Chartmasters today at FamilyChartmasters.com for your free consultation. Family Chartmasters will give the greatest care to your family history. When was the last time you heard your grandmother's voice or saw your family enjoying life back in the 1950s or 60s? If the reason is you haven't known what to do with your old recordings, videos, and films, here's your answer. The Multimedia Center in Salt Lake City. We brought in a video project to the Multimedia Center, and overnight they duplicated it to DVD so we could meet our deadline. The Multi- Multimedia Center, 2870 East, 3300 South, Salt Lake City. Open Monday through Friday, 10 to 6. Call 801-483-1717 or go to transferduplication.com. Genies, it's Fisher with exciting news. The Weekly Genie, the official newsletter of Extreme Genes, is here. It's your Monday morning briefing on what's happening in the world of genealogy and family history and on Extreme Genes. Get all the details of jaw-dropping stories of discovery and keep up with the latest techniques in family 
History Research. Get to know more about your favorite Extreme Genes personalities. And it's free. Sign up for the Weekly Genie now at ExtremeGenes.com or the Extreme Genes Facebook page. And when you do, you'll receive David Allen Lambert's Top 10 Tips for Beginning Genealogists from the Chief Genealogist of the New England Historic Genealogical Society. Sign up today for the Weekly Genie. Hey, we're back at it. It's our final segment of Extreme Genes, America's Family History Show and ExtremeGenes.com. This segment is brought to you by FamilySearch.org. And it's time to talk preservation with Tom Perry from TMC Place. He is our preservation authority. And uh, Tom, boy, we've seen a lot of natural disasters recently and in the most recent months as well. We had, of course, all the flooding from Hurricane Florence that's been taking place on the East Coast. Now on the West Coast, it's kind of strange, but in the South, Southwest, Arizona, Utah, getting the remnants of Hurricane Rosa. Those things aren't usually pushed inland like that. But for areas where they had fires, you got mudslides now. And all these weather situations affect people and their family memorabilia, do they not? Yeah, that's absolutely the truth. And you have to be really careful with these things because they need immediate attention. However, you don't always have immediate attention to give it because of all the things going on at the same time. So we're going to show you how to use a Back to the Future time machine to be able to preserve your videotapes, your audio tapes, and things such as these, your old film and such. Okay, so let's talk about fire, first of all. Now, people have material, I'm sure, lost in fire. But lost means what? How do you know film or video or any of these things are lost? Okay, the only way they're lost is obviously if you can't find them or they're nothing but dust and ashes. If there's any kind of media still there, even if it's really blackened, a lot of times it can be recovered, whether it's slides or photographs, videotapes, audio tapes. I have had videotapes come into us that the shelves were entirely melted down, so you basically saw two hubs with plastic around them. We were able to take the plastic off piece by piece and recover the videotape and the audio tape that was inside the case. So if you can see something and hold it in your hands, there's a good chance there's some way to recover it. And whether it's a professional like us or anywhere else in the country, there's professionals. Or if you're a do-it-yourselfer, there's different ways on the Internet you can read about of how to recover it yourself. Wow, that is an amazing thing to think you had that opportunity to salvage something like that. Now, in fires, you've got that. But fires also leave the opportunity for mudslides in rain, right, because of the burn scars that happen. So what happens when you get material damaged by dirt or a mudslide or something like that? Have you dealt with that before? Oh, absolutely. The down and dirty way to do this, if you're really pressed for time, is get the stuff out of the mud and get it wet as quick as you can. Spray it off. Put it in the sink. I prefer distilled water, but if you don't have time to do that, just get all the mud and grime off of it because that's going to cause mold to grow on it. It's going to cause the items to be scratched and it won't transfer as well. So what you want to do is get them as clean as you can, as quick as you can. Get them in Ziploc bags, get them in the freezer so you can store them and work on them in six months or a year or six years or whenever. And a lot of people think, well, this isn't going to fit in my freezer at my house. You can buy those chest freezers pretty cheap at any home improvement store and just get one of those and put all of your things in it, whether it's artwork, whether it's photos, slides, any of this kind of stuff, and stop the mold. Stop time, so to speak, in your time machine. And then when you can take your breath and get to it, Then you want to do it the right way and do all the other stuff. But the down and dirty way, this is the way to do it. Wow. All right. Great advice. And then the last thing we'd ask about, what about flooding? Flooding, almost the same thing. You want to get any dirt and debris off your things, wash them really quickly, put them in Ziploc bags, put them in the freezer. If you can get your photos apart easily, put wax paper between them. Any kind of things that you have, you want them in separate Ziploc bags so none of the damage from one goes to another. Get them in the freezer, get the mold stopped. Boy, what great advice, and this is a great segment to share, by the way, with friends who may be going through an experience like this. Tom, thanks so much. And, of course, if you have a question for Tom Perry, you can email him at asktom at tmcplace.com, or you can message him on Twitter at asktomp. Tom, talk to you again next week. Have a great one. My pleasure. Thank you. 
Hey, that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you missed any of it or you want to hear it again, of course, catch the podcast version. It's available through iTunes and iHeartRadio. And of course, you can download the free Extreme Genes app to your phone to catch all past episodes. We'll talk to you again next week. Thanks so much for joining us. And remember, as far as everyone knows, we're a nice, normal family. 